Firstly, I want to acknowledge our Trinity, the three in one, our Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost this morning, for he is worthy. And I know we prayed just now, but I just want us to come to God's mercy throne right now, not just for this presentation, but for this platform. So let us just pray. Hallelujah. We give you thanks this morning, Lord. We give you all the glory for you alone are worthy to be praised. You alone are worthy to be exalted. Lord, we come before you humbly this morning, oh Father God, firstly, asking for your forgiveness, oh Father God, for we know in our very sins, in our very thought, we sin against you. So Father God, we, we ask that you forgive us of anything that will separate us from your love from your throne room this morning, that we can enter boldly, O oh Father God, and come into the holy of holies, knowing that, O oh Father God, we are forgiven, we are washed. We, O oh Father God, have been renewed and strengthened in you. Lord, even for this presentation, O oh Father God, you have downloaded your words. And thank you, Father God, that you spoke to me firstly, so I can and I can speak to your people, O oh Father God. Give me a spirit of boldness and that I will say only that which you would have me to say. I give you all the honor, I give you all the glory as I humble myself in your presence. Hallelujah. We give you thanks, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So as our sister pointed out, that today we will be focusing on, on the economy and business today. I actually took it from another angle that um, from 1 Corinthians 13. So not just the economy, but for business as well, because that is the field that I am in. <laughs> and um, when Sister Yvonne reached out, um, Nervously, I said yes, but then again, I said, Lord, have your way. And I know that it's not by chance that I am here, and it's not by chance that any of us are on this platform this morning. So I just want to start off based on what the Lord has downloaded from 1 Corinthians. We know it's the entire chapter, but what he wants to focus this morning on is verses 4 through to 9. So I will just quickly read. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemingly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Bear, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity or love never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. So I will just stop right there for now in terms of the scriptures. But as I prayed and asked the Lord, how shall I speak to your people this morning? He reminded me that love is indeed patient and kind and not envious. And it does not insist on its own way. It doesn't rejoice in wrongdoing, but only in the truth. And what we need to recognize is that God's economy, in God's economy, love is first. Love is first at all time because he freely gave that love to us through his son, through the sacrifice that his son made. So there are some biblical principles on which to build, not just an economy for our country, but to build a business. So for me, just to start off with a little testimony, for me, I was in a job that I thought it was a good, com it was a good company. Um, for over 14 years, I've been with the company. And 
long and short that the Lord kept pressing on me um, that he needs me to step out in faith and start my business. Bearing in mind, this was right in right in the, the at the start of the pandemic in, the, in 2020. Also, that's the same time that my, because of COVID, my husband was redundant. And also <laughs> I had my second baby. So when the Lord kept saying, I said, no, Lord, I don't think you have the right Stacy. I think you have the wrong address. So me being so brazen to tell the Lord that he doesn't have <laughs> the right person. And for weeks, this went on almost, almost every morning in my devotion, the question kept asking, who is your source? And I kept pushing back. And the more I pushed back, the more I was miserable. I literally, I, all that was working from home, almost every evening, I, I ended the day in tears. I was miserable. I said, Lord, I can't do this anymore. I will just have to do your bidding. It was a challenging time initially, but after leaving, I was... I was actually offered another job that I never interviewed for. The company, the CEO asked me what position it is that I would want. And she also asked, what is the salary I'm looking at? And I said, Lord, this, <laughs> this has got to be you. I was holding on to, holding on to one end thinking that that was my only source and that was the only way of survival, not recognizing that God had a bigger plan. And even in the business, we have seen his hand move in such ways that have been so miraculous. Um, so I, I do have that job, but the business is what he really wanted me to be focusing on. I have doors that I never even knew existed Persons will normally say, you know, God opened doors. I'm not even saying God opened doors. He created doors that I never imagined could exist. I've gotten contracts just by emails. I've gotten contracts just by WhatsApp messages. I say, God, who, who does that? Only you. And he has just been miraculous. And that's why I can speak on, on this boldly because of what he is doing in, in and through my life and the principles that he's teaching me through him being our provider, through him being our refuge and our strength. So I just want to share with you this morning some of these principles that God has given me. And I recognize that it's not just for business, but it's for our economy, our countries, and how we should as people of God be at Nice City for our countries, be at Nice City daily, be interceding for the leaders of our countries, be interceding as, as because we recognize that the adversary is, is wreaking havoc in our nations at, 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 all, at all levels, at, at the different spheres. And we see, it at, we see it happening, especially here in Jamaica with our economy. We see the, the debt keep growing. We see the borrowing keeps happening. We see the interest rates keep going up. And it's because we're not following God's principles. And just to share about 10 or so with you um, from the perspective of, of our Bible. And the first one is the golden rule, which is to make people first treat others like you want to be treated and practice thoughtfulness. We see this very profound in Corinthians 13. When God speaks about being kind, he speaks about being just. He speaks about not being boastful and, 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 and treating others with respect. Luke 6 verse 31, that's Luke 6 verse 31, he reminds us to do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Many of our leaders fail to take this on. Rather, they would rather get whatever they can for themselves. They would rather 
grab as much as they can. And this happens in business. We see this happen in, in, in the large companies, the, the moguls, and even in our countries with our government, they will grab as much for themselves, not thinking about their citizens, not thinking about their employees. But we need to remember that the concept is to consider others first. It was even given in, in the commandments, love thy neighbor as thyself. And this, this reminds me, and this, this helps me to recognize the importance of treating people fairly, the importance of the golden rule of making people first. So that's one of the first principles the Lord had downloaded to me and downloaded to me in terms of my business. And I recognize that it's important in our economy, how we can help to grow our economies, not just by grabbing what we can for ourselves, but thinking about others. The second principle in terms of love and, and our economy and business is the focus on profit, to focus on profit with a purpose. Know your priorities. Live life and run your businesses with purpose and vision. We are reminded that a people without a vision will perish. And, and we need to recognize this. We need to recognize this in every era of our lives and that we need to be able to attract people to our mission and our mission is to be disciples that's our first mission first and foremost above everything else is to be disciples for our king and and that that should be our mission in every era of our life in every sphere in every in, in our businesses on our daily businesses when we go in to to our business places we should recognize that we are on the mission field and that is another principle in terms of focusing not just on profit, but to have profit with a purpose. What are we going to do with that profit? Even if we make a profit, how are we going to help others through our profit? How are we going to be philanthropists through, with our profits? How are we going to help on the mission field through our profits? Mark 8 verse 36 tells us, what good is it for someone to gain the whole world and lose their soul out of greed, out of arrogance, and, and use your, we should be using our profits for good, right? And not damaging others, not damaging our economy through this. So what good is it that we, pro, that, that we gain the world and lose our soul? What good is it to gain profits by, by robbing others? What good is it to gain profits and make millions when others are dying? What good is it to make profit when your employees are going home hungry? There's no wage increase. There's no negotiation. How, how, how is it that you are making a difference in your country when you are passing others on the streets who, who, who you see just asking for a meal? Sometimes they don't even ask you for money. I have had instances where people ask for a meal. When we recognize that this is this is, this is how we show love to others. This is how we recognize that we can be stewards of what the Lord has given unto us. So as we go along, just a reminder, the first principle is to make people first. And secondly, focus on profits with a purpose, not just focusing on how we can build our GDP as a country and how we can build our profits as a, as a business, but how we can use that profit to build God's kingdom. The third principle that the Lord provided to me is to know your yeses and know your noes. <laughs> when I got that, I was confused. I said, Lord, what, what do you mean that, by that? And he said to make decisions based on your values. Don't make decisions because others say so. Don't make decisions because it's the norm. Don't make decisions because this is what is, is happening in other countries. This is what is happening in, with other people. This is what's happening with the large moguls that you see around you. But make your decisions based on your values and your value system. And anybody can have values, but your value system should come from the throne room of God. Say yes to things which will make your organization or your country better. 
don't get into unholy covenants out of the love of money. Because we were reminded again in 1 Corinthians, always going back to my point of reference, that love is not puffed up. It's not arrogant there is no greed involved in love so don't get into unholy contracts or unholy covenants as a nation out of the love for money out of out of love for just gaining whatever you can but go go into go into contracts knowing that that god is is in it and knowing that your the many of the principles uh, for our economy and business will will be better or will change because of, of these of these contracts. People cannot follow a person that does not know where they are going or why they are going in the direction that they are going. So we should be able to live up to our word. Our yes should be yes, our nay should be nay. We should fulfill our commitments. So what I have recognized and what I have come to recognize in, in business that our word should be our bond. And this is, this is not just even from a biblical perspective, but even in general, our word, what we should be as Christians, as believers, is that our word, we should be able to commit to our word and our word should be our bond. Because if we are trusting in God, if we are saying that we are children of the most high, our word should be our bond. Person shouldn't be questioning our integrity as, as business people. Pre person should be in questioning our integrity as leaders. So what we need to do is to stand on the word of God. And once we are standing on his word and his principles, we can't go wrong. We can't lead others astray through our leadership. We will be able to stand on our yeses and stand on our noes. So the fourth principle I want to leave with us is to practice stewardship in our leadership. And when I got that one, I said, Lord, I have, and, and even in my prayer this morning, I, I know and I've recognized that the Lord had to speak to me first and show me where I can do better through his word and, and, and following him and, 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 and leaning on his, his promises before I could even deliver this. So he dealt with me first, and, and that is what, that's why I love our savior because he chastises those who he loves. And I recognize that sometimes I've, I've fallen short in terms of being a good steward with what the Lord has given unto me. We should recognize that we should use our resources wisely. And, and many a times we fall in this area as I, as I, um, as I, I'm saying that I have fallen into that category sometimes. We forget that God owns it all. He has allowed us the opportunity and we should not forget that one of the main principles and, and I have learned that one of the principles for blessings to be released, for God's hand to be opened unto us because we, God can rule with a fist and he can open his, that fist as blessings unto us, is that we must not forget and he will reward those who use his resources to glorify him. Matthew 25 verse 23 reminds us, that's Matthew 25, 23 reminds us that we'll do good and, and well, well done, sorry, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with few things. I will put you in charge over many things. This is what the mantra, this is what we should be doing on a daily basis. It's how we should operate as business owners. It's how we should operate. And this is what we should want to hear from the Lord. Well done, good and faithful servant that we should not grab up all we can just for ourselves. And one of the, the main things in terms of practicing this a good stewardship is what he has given unto us. And tithing, that is something I have learned and I have proven God over and over because as I said, everything is not 
he has given us a portion, but everything is really his. And we should give back to him what God is deserving unto him. And I think it's a good time to mention the fifth principle is the law of sowing and reaping. Sow bountifully, be generous with your seeds, plant daily, be constantly trying new things and don't be afraid to start small. Practice with patience. And this is one of the things the Lord had really pulled me up on in terms of even the, the business where it's not about tithing based on what you think. There's a principle that he has put down in terms of your one ten, And that one ten should not come after, you know, you say you, you have the, the different bills to pay, you have the, the, the school fees to pay, you, you have the utilities, you have all of that. And then what is left, you give God one tenth. No, that's not how it works. One tenth of what you have earned, one tenth of what you have been given. That is what you should give on to the Lord and he will bless you bountifully. I have proven that time and time again. Out of my contracts, I've proven that. And sometimes we will say, well, God, that's, that's so much. <laughs> that's so much when we have so many bills to pay and, and things and, and of bills piling up. But God is not saying, my daughter, I, I have so many other children to feed. I have so many other children to attend to. He is giving you what you deserve. He's giving you his time. He's giving you your blessings. He's giving you all that you deserve. So why should we fall short? Why should we not give God everything that he deserves? The Lord reigns on the just and unjust. Many are companies we see prospering. Many are countries we see prospering, yet their economy, we see all sorts of things, all, all sorts of good coming out of their economy, but, but yet we hear of all sorts of atrocities going on socially, going on in their government. But you know what the principle is, and we need to understand that. As I said, God reigns on the just and the unjust. The blessings will come on the just and the unjust, because if you follow the principle of giving, if you follow the principle of sowing, God is no man's debtor. He will give back unto you what you have given unto him. He's no man's debtor, no matter who you are. He will, he will give unto you once you have given, him, given back unto him. The Lord doesn't go back on his word. So, and he does not take back his word. He doesn't take back his blessings. And that's something we fail to recognize, even as a country. Uh, for us here in Jamaica, our very anthem is a prayer unto God. And no matter all the atrocities that's happening, our forefathers laid down some grown rules and laid down our, our and laid down for us even our very national anthem as a prayer to God and those are con covenants that we have gone into and many of us as a people go into covenants with God and we have gone back on our word but God never fails and he's a loving God and I'm thanking God that he is not just the lion, but he is the lamb. He is the forgiving lamb. And but he does not go back on his word. It's for us to stay steadfast in an unmovable because God doesn't change. He, he does not change for anyone, for any situation. So we must remember in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 6, it tells us whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bount bountifully. So we, we need to recognize that the concept of tithing is not just an optional thing. Tithing is not optional. If you want the blessings of the Lord to be released on you, on your generation and your generations to come, on your country, on your, on your district, on, 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 on 
your economy as a whole on the GDP and the growth and the resources of your economy. We see so many countries these days, they are struggling, they are borrowing from the IMF, they're they are racking up debts left, right and center. But at the end of the day, if we give God what he deserves and if we give him bountifully, we will be bountifully, believe me on that. The sixth concept and that we need to look at and, and how love and, and the, the, the whole 1 Corinthians 13 ties in with our economy and, and how our economy and business in, businesses can be blessed is believe and ask for the impossible. We need to set big spiritual goals. We need to dream big impossible dreams. <laughs> Believe me, saints, I have done that. I have started off with nothing and the Lord is still working on me. I'm still being humbled on a daily basis, but I see where once you have impossible dreams and you set big spiritual goals, the Lord will come through. He will honor his word. Pray big prayers and expect even bigger answers from our God because he delighted in the impossible. God wants to do things that amazes us. He wants to see what, what seems impossible with man is always possible with God. Nothing is impossible with us. We hear this through, through ministry and song. We, we hear this through the spoken word, through it. God's written word that nothing is impossible with God. And we just need to tap into that resource. We just need to do our part. We need to act in integrity at all times. And God is calling on godly leaders. He's calling for godly leaders. He's calling for godly leaders in our nations. He's calling for godly leaders in businesses. He, God is, is not into second class. He's not into half-heartedness. And if we don't pull up our socks as a people, no matter how we think we have done good, it takes nothing for God to remove us. It takes nothing for God to, to remove us and replace us with godly men and women. And that is why I want to make sure that we understand on this platform that Although we are speaking about love and the economy, there's so much more that can be entied in, in all the spheres, all seven spheres. There's so much more that can be tied through love and the concepts of being kind, of not being arrogant, of not being boastful. And we need to seek, one important thing is that we need to seek first the kingdom of God and all other things will be added but we try to do things in reverse. We often try to do things in reverse and we have, we, we try to fit God into our agenda when it should be the other way around. God is a jealous God and he does not do things half-heartedly. So that's not his expectations of us. If he doesn't do things half-heartedly and we say we are his hands and his feet in, the, and in our nations, we say we, are his mouthpiece in our nations. Why are we doing things half-heartedly? Why are we doing things part way? God has given us a mandate to go out into all the world and preach the gospel. So in every area of our lives, in our businesses, we should be disciples. In our economy, we should pray up our leaders. Many times we have been guilty of criticizing our leaders. Yes, they have done wrong. And yes, there are many, I will not, I will not dispute. Yes, there are many who, who are not godly, but we do recognize that if God, God can change hearts, and if we spend the time and intercede on behalf of our leaders, a turnaround can happen in our economies. If we spend time and pray for our financial sector, turnaround can happen. If we spend time and pray for our banking industries, many things can turn around. 
in Jamaica, I'm not sure how many of you on this platform is hearing because it, it is international of all the things and the atrocities that are happening in our financial sector right now. But we as our people, rather than sit back and criticize, if we spend time at me city on behalf of our country, on behalf of our central banks, on behalf of our financial institutions, there can be a turnaround in our economy. We can make a difference. We as a people need to show love. We as a people need to show kindness. We as a people need to show empathy rather than criticizing constantly. I have been guilty of that. And we need to make a difference. We need to show that God is love. We are the ones that need to show that. The world will not show that. So we need to remember to pray up our leaders, both in business and in the government. We need to make God and his principles first priority. It's not about the GDP. It's not about the budget. It's not about the profits. We need to make God's principles first priority. Trust his order and seek first his kingdom. And all else, all else will be added. All the prophets will come after. All the fourth generation businesses will come after. The subsidiaries will come after. You, you will get all that you stand in need of once God's principles is taken into consideration first. Another principle is to improve your team and you will improve your organization. That goes for the country. Improve your people and you will improve your country. Find the right and the best people to bring around you. We see all the great, the great leaders in the Bible. We see Moses. We see all the great people, Joshua, all the great leaders. They had people. They surrounded themselves with people, with mentors, even with myself. I pray, I pray constantly, God, send destiny help us because this is new to me. Yes, I will, I will take from you. Yes, I will wait on you for guidance and leadership, but send tangible destiny helpers, people who know what to do, people who can help to guide me because I'm not an island. I'm not, I am new to business, but God, you know all things and it takes nothing out of us to ask for help. Many of us are so boastful and prideful. We don't know how to ask for help. And that's something that we fail as a people to do. Remember, love is not arrogant. Don't be afraid to ask for wise counsel. Wise counsel can turn a country around. When the government have wise counsel around them, they can make wise decisions for our economy. They can make wise decisions for our people. They can make wise decisions for businesses. We can make wise decisions for the investors to come into our countries. Ask questions and listen. <laughs> That's something the Lord reminded me to do. Ask questions, but listen. Listen to him, wait on him, wait on his answers, wait on answers from others. And we, another scripture that was given to me to back this up is Ephesians 2 verse 10 and that um, we need to help to build something bigger than you can build. When you build with others, you can build something bigger than what you can build alone. Christian businesses and leaders need to have a creative purpose. We need to have our Christian leaders placed in strategic places for a season and for a reason. We need to understand that we are placed for a season and for a reason. And it's not, a, I, I again say, it's not just to build up ourselves as individuals, but it's to build up all those who are around us. Every great leader in the Bible had their season and there was a reason for their season. 
Moses had a season and it was taken over by Joshua. There are many others that had their season. Esther had her season for her people and they were placed in strategic places for a reason. So we need to go to God. If it's a case where you don't know that your season, you're even living in your season and you are there for your place strategically at your companies, at your business places for a reason. We need to see God's face. And what I want to leave with you finally, the final points and final principle is to do things today that will impact, not just today, but for tomorrow. Any government or business person knows that wise investment can help to bring abundance. And this is out of love. This is out of love for self and each other. Matthew 6, verse 21 states, where your treasure is, there is where your heart will be also. Leaders are called to be leaders with passion and to lead with all their hearts. We must use our resources for our country to improve our people, to improve our infrastructures, to improve our businesses. And out of kindness and love, good investment will almost always lead to growth and development. And we can see where this can be for our country as well as our businesses. We need to build our economy on biblical principles. And this must require constant commune with God for leading and direction. Paul reminds us in Colossians 3, verse 23 to 24, that whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for man, but knowing that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as, an, as a reward. It is the Lord that you are serving, not man. So if our leaders recognize and remember that we will work to build our economy, that we will work to build our businesses in an excellent way that honors God, we must be reminded that love is sac a sacrifice. Giving of ourselves is a sacrifice and we should do that with open arms. Again, I will remind us in closing that love is kind, it's patient, it's not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoice in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. God bless you.